Hello, everyone. This is News Now from the Belmont Journal and the return of our weekly segment with Franklin Tucker, editor of the Belmontonian, which you can find online at belmontonian.com. And I'm your host, Mike Crowley. And so welcome, Franklin. Today we're talking about the upcoming town elections. What can you tell us about the competitive races? Well, there are three competitive races, uh, one for the select board, uh, the other for the Board of Health. And, uh, and especially exciting is uh, that the, uh, we have a very competitive races for the Municipal Light Board, which is now an independent elected board. And rather than having the three members of the select board be that board. So um, how about the select board, Franklin? What's happening there? Well, we have the incumbent, Roy Epstein. Um, he's, he's seeking re-election for his second term, and he's being um, uh, challenged by uh, Jeff Lassiter, who is a, if anybody knows anything about Belmont, if you're here less than 25 years, you're known as a newcomer. So he's been here uh, for about seven years, uh, seven, I believe, seven years. Uh, and uh, he uh, is running for the select board, and, and, and surprisingly, he has not been uh, really involved with uh, Belmont politics in any way or Belmont government in any way. He's not, he hasn't, he hasn't run for a town meeting. He hasn't uh, even uh, uh, voted in, in any town race, town election races. So he's pretty much a political neophyte. Uh, he is. How about his background, frankly? His background, he, um, he has worked for the U.S. government. Uh, he says uh, um, <clears throat> it's with the CIA, and, and he, he worked with the CIA, um, and he's been around the world. You know, he has a lot of assignments, and he, but he said he wanted to settle in a, in a place that he could, like, you know, bring his kids up in a good school system, so he came to Belmont. Uh, he, is the, he is the candidate of uh, the Citizens for uh, Fiscally Responsible Belmont. Um, they are a group that is more of an austerity-based uh, organization. They, they want to see a lot of cuts in town. So he is their, their candidate. Uh, uh, we've, we've really had to look at uh, uh, two debates. Uh, one was the Legal Women Voters, and the other one was from a joint, um, the Belmont Chinese American Association and the Pan-Asian Coalition. Um, that debate was rather um, <clears throat> informative to find out a lot more about Mr. Lassiter. I mean, we kind of know where Mr. Uh, Epstein is. Is he's the no, he's the number guy on the uh, select board. He is a economist, and he and he really is careful about what he supports. He looks at it. He does a lot of analysis. Uh, what we know about uh, Jeff Lassiter is he he does a lot. He um, uh, he parrots a lot of what the uh, Citizens for Financially Responsible Belmont have been advocating and what they're also saying. Uh, I think the biggest thing that he said in both debates is that uh, the, uh, the, that the school system, which is about, a, a, I think next year's um, fiscal uh, budget is about 68, $69 million. He says that basically that uh, you do, you, that's what they're budgeting for, but they could really um, run the school system for about $10 million less. And I think that that was something that I've heard on the street that people have said, um, you know, that's that's just not a viable concept. Um, he's also, you know, he's also uh, he's also said things like uh, the town is running a budget deficit. Well, we're not really running a budget deficit because it's illegal to have a budget deficit at, at, at the beginning of a fiscal year. He also said that the, the uh, uh, middle and high school building committee is $17 million in the red um, for uh, building the rest of the the uh, um, the project and and that's that's just not uh, factually uh, correct. So there are some things that he are he's saying that um, that uh, is um, that are you know just a little um, maybe somebody who should have known this before going forward and making those statements um, that are just not viable. All right, is 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 um, Roy Epstein saying anything um, that a voter should be aware of uh, with respect to his candidacy for re-election? I think he's basically saying that, you know, uh, you know who I am. Um, you know, I'm, the, I'm, I'm somebody who's really responsible. Uh, he talks about how he helped um, uh, write a, a letter that uh, uh, helped uh, the, the residents along Beatrice, Beatrice Circle uh, to make that project, that 40B project, smaller. Uh, and I think the, the, the people there uh, praised him for that. He's, he, he's known as somebody who may be a little bit contrary uh, among that three member board, but um, they work all, the three of them work very well together. And um, I don't think I've, I, I, again, Roy is more of 
uh, somebody who uh, just says, you know, I, I'll I'll take a deep hard look at these things. And what do you expect from a Warren committee, you know, a former Warren committee member, you know, somebody who's who's, who's going to take a deep dive into the facts before he makes a, a statement? He's you know he's not the most colorful candidate, but he's certainly the most steady. All right, so Franklin, let's talk about um, some of the other races. So the the um, the light board. This is this is a, a new set of races. It's a new board. Um, what can you tell us about um, this race? Well, there's a there's a number of, of uh, 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 people who were on the advisory uh, board uh, that were advising the uh, the old um, light board who are running. And those are uh, the, that's Mr. Beaver, Frank uh, Klinsky, and, and, and McCray. Uh, they're all running, and they're not. It, while they're saying they're not running as a group, they probably are. They're mentioning like this is a solid group, and we can then uh, bring forward uh, much of the good things that we had done uh, as an advisory board. And they did. Uh, they did again. They were almost like the Warren Committee of, of, of the Light Board. They were uh, mm-hmm. people who do deep dives and and really look into um, a lot of the aspects of. Uh, you know, green energy, bringing that a lot in. And um, so they're a really good group. So it's, it's almost like a, this, this group is saying, elect us and you'll get a really strong board. Now, uh, do we and, also have newcomers to this, to this oh, race? Oh, you bet. I mean, you've got uh, the one year. I mean, uh, if anybody knows what the uh, uh, board is going to look like, uh, basically we're going to elect uh, a slate of uh, candidates for um, three years, two years, and one year. So there's really three elections going on here. Um, the one year is, is just two newcomers, um, uh, Andy um, McAdoo, I believe that's how he says it, and uh, Chris Morris. These are two really young candidates, and we'll see what, what happens with them, you know, because it's always interesting to see who's going to have the um, – uh, uh, you know, the, the backing of the town. Uh, both of them are young, but both of them are really uh, strong candidates. So, um, you know, that's going to be a good race. Should, people should ignore that one year race. Okay. And Franklin, one more competitive race, the health board. That's right. You have uh, Julie uh, uh, LeMay, who is uh, going for her third term. She's been there for six years. And uh, Marina Atlas, who is a young uh, resident, um, uh, and what you have there is a really contrast, a, a really good contrast. Uh, LeMay, um, she really is involved with like what's called the uh, mundane necessities of the, of, of the Board of Health, which means let's just get, you know, we've gone through COVID. Let's make sure we have a good standing on that, uh, you know, uh, making sure that we still do contact tracing and things like that. Um, and but she says let let's get let's get back to that those things that we are good at you know which is restaurant uh, inspections you know dog dog complaints you know things that people re- that really affect people's lives you know it may not seem like the, the most uh, sexiest thing but it really is something that she wants to get back to and have a really strong base you know and for a small town and with a very small staff that's something that she's really um uh, looking forward to to building on um miss atlas is 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 very young she comes from an academic background she has a lot of uh she she wants to do a lot more for the uh, the the board being more investigative being more active uh she is um somebody who is into um uh healthy lawns and that's a that's a great thing you know uh, one thing that she said is that, you know, we shouldn't, um, you know, uh, any more athletic fields we have should never, should, shouldn't be turfs. And she's, she's talked about clovers, using clovers. Now, Harris Field is getting near its, uh, getting near its, um, um, uh, you know, ex- expiration date. Yeah. It's, it's, it's getting close. So, you know, the, you can expect them to go to the, um, uh, city, you know, to the CPC, the, the, the Community Preservation uh, Committee. And, and ask for you know a million dollars to to redo it. Now, how much of a debate are we going to have with you know taking Harris Field, which is a traditional turf field with with rubber you know undergrade, uh, to to and, and her belief that we should have, have clovers you know clover field, and you know, we'll go through and we went through that debate a couple of years ago, and um, I think we all agreed that uh, you know you'd want to go with that artificial kind of turf rather than you know, a turf that is natural and simply because it's the use is just so much. You have so much use on those on those fields. 
All right. So that's something that some people would argue. But thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much, Franklin. And the, the election is on April 5th, Tuesday, April 5th. Be sure to get out and vote. And thank you so much. We'll see you next week. Thank you.